Welcome back to Squawk Box this morning. Time now for the executive edge and the changing role of corporate boards, which must now meet the challenges of the modern age, now tackling all sorts of issues, climate change, racial and gender equality. Dambisa Moyo is here. She's an economist and veteran board member. She's currently director at Chevron and 3M. And her new book is out today. It's called How Boards Work. Dambisa, it's great to see you uh, this morning. And as we just mentioned, uh, the role of boards has changed substantially. Uh, it, it feels almost as if boards and corporations around the world are having to contend with, uh, frankly, social issues uh, that historically companies didn't want to touch or, or, or didn't think they needed to touch. But there's almost a game of whack-a-mole being played almost every day. And I, I wonder how you think as a board um, you should think about creating some kind of framework around these issues. Well, thank you, Andrew. I mean, the reality is corporations, so by it's not just large global complex corporations, but all forms of uh, organizations that are in the private sector have been a key part of the global economy, whether it's through job creation, um, tax base, infrastructure, and of course, innovation. Um, but yes, you're absolutely right. Um, in the last decade or so, um, there's been a push, obviously, uh, a flag was planted in uh, 2019 with the Business Roundtable um, uh, statement, which is to say that corporations are now being essentially uh, put in, in a responsibility beyond uh, what has traditionally been the sort of purview of, uh, of global corporations. And the reality is I don't think corporations are shying away from it at all. But what's critically important is for people to understand that there are trade-offs um, that are associated with the ESG approach. And although it's critically urgent, um, it's also important for us to right. have a sort of full towel on our heads as we think about the way forward. I have a question for you. Since, since you've been on a lot of boards and you've now written this book about just how clubby boards really are, I think the public has a perception, by the way, shared in part by people like Warren Buffett and others who've talked about sort of the clubby nature of boards and how once you get on, you don't want to get off. Uh, that the incentives actually may be more misaligned than aligned, um, it, not just because of the stock rolls that the, the, or the stock that's doled out, but because people want these jobs and as because they want the jobs, are they really going to hold, uh, you know, a CEO or management's feet to the fire? Well, I'll tell you, Andrew, I miss that boondoggle um, because in the over 10 years that I've served on boards, it's been absolutely uh, transparent and brutal. Board members have annual review processes that are overseen not just by outside organizations that review us, but obviously we also do 360 reviews of directors. And directors do leave um, very often, um, not just because of tenure limits, but also because of performance issues. So, yes, I, I, I also... Um, uh, uh, I'm sensitive to the fact that it was very clubby. I mean, the very fact that I serve on these uh, large global complex organizations should tell you that it's not clubby. I myself am an unconventional board member. I didn't come from the C-suite. I'm obviously a black woman from Africa. And reality is I joined my first board at 39. And I think those trends are getting more great, more importantly, um, are getting uh, embedded in how corporations and boards are seeing themselves going forward. It, it, in terms of what the actual role is today, how, how much time do you think a, a, a public company board member spends in a given year? Well, obviously, it depends on what's going on. Uh, you know, I remember being on the board of Barclays Bank, and I was told we'd have six meetings a year. In 2010, we had about 54 meetings, which is obviously about one a week. Um, but we just emerged from a financial crisis, and there were a lot of uh, issues, regulatory, et cetera, that we needed to address. Of course, last year um, and, uh, and ongoing with the global pandemic, board members are required um, to provide that oversight in very rapidly changing environments. And so I think the notion that uh, it's sort of set in stone and don't don't call us, we'll call you, uh, is just not the way right. it operates. I mean, when things happen and if there's lots of movement, whether it's in automation, um, in, in a pandemic, healthcare right. questions, uh, we have to step up, and we do. What do you make of the, the incentives? And the reason I ask is oftentimes you hear from, from folks in the business world who say, you know what, a public company board is so different than a private company board. When a private company has, is there, Everybody on the board is perfectly aligned because it's usually the owners of the company. They've got a plan. This is what's happening. The public company board, it's all about fiduciary duty, but it's a little bit of a CYA game. <laughs> um, so I've had the privilege of serving on both um, publicly traded as well as 
private um, uh, companies uh, over the 10 years uh, that I've served on corporate boards. And of course, there are a lot of similarities. I mean, the, ultimately, we're custodians of these businesses. We don't want them to go awry. Um, and clearly, if you're a private business, you have perhaps less challenge with respect to short-termism and a lot of the issues that we know that corporate boards um, have to deal with. But the reality is, in terms of alignment, I mean, there's so many regulatory aspects um, to what we do as our mandate, whether it's overseeing strategy, hiring, and in some instances, firing the CEO, and now with the cultural frontier, that the notion that we could be offside with the ultimate goals of the corporation, which is ultimately we want it to remain a going concern, um, I don't think is, I think that idea is kind of misplaced. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.